What you see in front of you is what they call a Martello Tower or Martello Fort. Small defensive fort on uh, across the English um, coastline and it was initially to defend us against the possible invasion by the French. About 40 foot tall which is about just over 10 meters and the walls are something about eight foot thick. Now at the time uh, they were designed to obviously repel cannon uh, balls but eventually over a period of time where they started to make it rifle shots or rifled shots which are much more powerful then these these towers became um, defunct. Uh, a lot of these had um, two floors in them. Um, one floor would have been for crew accommodation, one's for storage, one for no doubt putting the ammo in. The top floor would have been for a, a, a gun and I think some of them even had a, a little cellar with a water container in it. The Martello Towers were inspired from um, some castles or something similar to this called Martella Towers in uh, Corsica. I think that's where the name came from, it's just a derivative of that and knowing the British it was probably should have been called Martella but like anything else when the British go anywhere they always change the names, it's like Eeps uh, became wipers in the First World War so I can see where maybe the derivative comes from. You can see the way it's built, it's obviously thicker at the bottom and, and starts to taper off the top but the, the roundness of it makes it ideal for making it less of a target for, you know, as I said before, cannonballs uh, they were probably just boats off, especially near the bottom of the middle. Eventually, a uh, rifle shot, which was more powerful and more direct, uh, could possibly destroy these. Along the coastline of uh, Sussex and Essex, there was roughly, there was exactly, actually, 29 Martello Towers uh, built. Um, there was quite a few built on the south coast as well. Obviously, that's another invasion area. And um, down there they were numbered, but up here they were actually lettered from A to K. So this one here at Clacton was uh, lettered C. The height of these made them, the height of these made them ideal for um, observation areas. And no doubt Second World War, they would also be for um, maybe a flat position and maybe a such light. But I know this one was um, like a fire control type of tower for uh, sea mines that were laid across this estuary. And there's a trigger apparently inside there where if they observed any sort of submarines, if they could, or any enemy ship, then they could press a button and no doubt um, if it was individual um, mines then they could blow up the necessary ones. Looks like they're doing some renovation work on this at the moment. Um, that looks like the original door which is about 10 foot 3 metres up, uh, no doubt to get through some steps. Considering that's the 19th century, it's actually in quite good condition. It's obviously been rendered at some point to give it some more um, possible, um, less chance of erosion from the sea. Uh, you can see bricks there that have basically blown. They've got water behind them blown away. This particular tower um, has 750,000 bricks in it and it's two to three metres thick, between eight and 10 foot, 12 foot, sorry. It was armed with three cannons on the roof and had five gun batteries located nearby which disappeared due to coastal erosion. So beside this tower there was also a, a coastal barrier that, but that was way back in the 19th century. Now that's all gone. After the end of the Napoleon it was, um, as I said before, they were sold off to, to private um, ownership. This, house, this was a house up until about 1938 then. Billy Bucklins must have bought it for a Bucklins holiday camp and it was a water tower for, to supply that camp. But this is the last remnants of that camp, so it must have been around here somewhere. Apparently there's three around uh, Clacton on Sea area. We've just visited um, D. No, sorry, we've just visited C, now we're gonna visit in D. This Martello tower, if you look on top there, there's a uh, observation post and it was used to uh, overlook the estuary behind me. The estuary was led with a series of um, sea mines, I think it were, and uh, it was there to observe any um, shipping or possible submarines they could see them. And uh, if they could, there was a, apparently there's a trigger inside there, or a button or a lever, wherever it may be, 
uh, they could actually detonate, uh, I'm assuming, individual mines to uh, blow up uh, when the, the ship went past or they happened to see a submarine. Uh, and it looks as though it's still intact. So the north bank of Common Stone Point, which is about 13 miles, I think, this is all of these structures on this coastline stretched to. Now we've seen two of the uh, Martello Towers around Clacton. There's a third one. We'll go and see if we can find, try and find it. Come to a place called, I think it's St. Osseth, which will be the start of the uh, these Martello Towers, or the end of them, whichever way you look at it. There's one of you, uh, and this is the one, I think I mentioned, that has been turned into a museum. Um, so, it's not open today. Well, we can have a quick look round anyway, and there's a uh, First World War tank replica. This is the tower I mentioned about there being World War One, uh, World War Two um, um, museum inside. It only opened at weekend. Um, it's dedicated to a P-51 fighter pilot who crashed around this area in 1945 from the 479th Battalion or Fighter Group, one of the two. Oh, there we go. So it's a fitting tribute to a, a gentleman who risked his life for us and what we believe in today, freedom. <laughs>